Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Professor Mandeep from Guru Nanak Dev University, Amritsar. Today we are going to talk on the module Environment Protection Act 1986 from the paper Business Environment. Now, After completing this module, you will be able to know the concept of environment protection. Also, whatever are the objectives which were framed under the Environment Protection Act 1986, you will be able to understand the various provisions of Environment Protection Act 1986. Nature provides huge resources, mainly in the form of raw material like water, soil, wood, forests, oil, minerals which are vital and required as inputs for any production purpose in one way or the other. The natural environment plays an important role in securing the economic development of any nation. While supporting economic activities, environmental crises occur that leads to deterioration in the quality of the environment like we all know because of the industrial development because of the development of the infrastructure like roads bridges etc so many trees are being cut so that is basically deterioration for ensuring sustainable development environmental issues like pollution of air water soil deforestation depletion of the natural resources, global warming and climate changes need to be considered. In the present scenario, gases and toxins released by the industries and factories, combustion of fossil fuels, the excessive amount of garbage and dirty waste etc. are the main pollutants that cause the tremendous threat to the human welfare in the form of various kinds of diseases which we have never heard before. Now, in the light of this, let's talk about environment legislation. The entire world is facing numerous environmental problems. It's not only India, every country. In order to maintain the healthy environment, environmental legislation plays a very very important role very very prominent role so if there is no legislation the situation is going to worsen so on the global perspective several rules and regulations have been made to curb the destructive effect on the environment environmental legislations play a very important role in educating the people about their prime responsibility to protect and preserve the quality of natural environment, natural resources. Environmental rules prevent further degradation of the environment. The United Nations Conference on the Human Environment held in Stockholm in 1972 proclaims the governments and the people to make an effort for the preservation and improvement of the human environment, natural environment, for the benefit of present and future generations. Environmental legislation in Indian context. India's first serious attempt regarding environmental legislation was through the 42nd Amendment to the Constitution in 1976, which incorporated fundamental rights and duties and directive principles of state policy concerning protection for environment and protection of forests and wildlife of the country. Article 51A of the Indian Constitution states that it shall be the duty of every citizen of India to protect and improve the natural environment including forests, lakes, rivers and wildlife and to have compassion for living creatures. Article 48A of Directive Principle of State Policy under the Indian Constitution says that the state shall 
and vendor to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forests and wildlife of the country. In 1980, Department of Environment came into existence. Later, in 1985, Department of Environment was elevated to Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. This Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, being the central agency, started working with the prime objectives, that is, the protection of environment and ensuring the welfare of animals, prevention and abatement of pollution, afforestation and regeneration of degraded areas, conservation and survey of flora, fauna, forests and wildlife. Bhopal gas tragedy actuates the Indian government to enact the Environment Protection Act 1986, in short, known as EPA. It was enacted under Article 253 of the Constitution and came into force on 19th November 1986, later amended in 1991. The Environment Protection Act 1986, number 29 of 1986, this act was designed to act as an umbrella legislation as it enabled the central government to coordinate the activities of various central and state authorities set up for preservation, conservation and protection of the environment under the previous acts like Wildlife Protection Act 1972, Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974, Forest Conservation Act 1980, Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1981. The main objectives of EPA were to provide for the protection and improvement of the environment and for the matters connected with it, to effectively implement the decisions taken at United Nations Conference on Human Environment, Stockholm, 1972, in which India also participated, to take appropriate steps for the protection and enhancement of human environment and prevention of hazardous to human beings, other living creatures, plants and property. Now, the scheme of the Act, the Environment Protection Act 1986 contains chapters 1 to 4, where the sections are numbered from 1 to 26. Chapter 1 contains only two sections, that is 1 and 2, which provide the reference to the Act that it extends to whole of India and the various definitions related to it. Chapter 2 contains section 3 to 6, which deals with the general parts of the central government. Chapter 3 is having sections 7 to 17, which lays down the detailed procedure followed for the prevention, control and abatement of environmental pollution. While the last chapter 4, having the section 18 to 26, specifies the miscellaneous rules, laws and functions of central government. Short title, Extend and Commencement, it contains Section 1. This Act, known as Environment Protection Act 1986, extends to whole of India. Section 2 is containing various definitions. The first term, Environment. Environment includes water, air and land and the interrelationship which exists among and between water, air and land and human beings other living creatures, plants, microorganisms and property. Next term comes environmental pollutant. It means any solid, liquid or gaseous substance present in such concentration as may be or tend to be injurious to the environment. Environmental pollution means the presence in the environment of any environmental pollutant. Handling. 
in relation to any substance means the manufacture processing treatment package storage transportation use collection destruction conversion offering for sale transfer or the like of such substance hazardous substance means any substance or preparation which by reason of its chemical or physic chemical properties or handling is liable to cause harm to the human beings other living creatures plants microorganism property or the environment occupier occupier means in relation to any factory or premises a person who has control over the affairs of the factory or the premises and includes in relation to any substance the person in possession of the substance prescribed here means prescribed by the rules made under this act section 3 deals with general powers of the central government that is to protect and improve the environment the central government has a power to take all such measures as it deems necessary or expedient for the purpose of protecting and improving the quality of environment and preventing controlling and abating the environmental pollution such measures may include the coordination of actions by the central government state government officers and other authorities under this act or the rules made there under or under any other law planning and execution of nation wide program for the prevention control and abatement of the environmental pollution central government has a power to lay down the standards for the quality of the environment in its various aspects to lay down the standards for emission or discharge of the environment pollutants from the various sources also to lay down procedures and safeguards for the handling of hazardous substances being used by the factories or the industries central government has a power to examine such manufacturing processes materials substances as are likely to cause environmental pollution government can carry out and sponsor investigation and research relating to the problems of environmental pollution moreover establishment or recognition of environmental laboratories and institutes to carry out the functions entrusted to such environmental laboratories and institutions under this act is the power of the government moreover any other matter whatever the central government deems necessary or important for the purpose of securing the effective implementation of the provision of the act the government can do that the central government may if it considers it necessary or expedient so to do for the purpose of this act by order published in the official gazette constitute an authority or authorities by such name or names as may be specified in the order for the purpose of exercising and performing such of the powers and functions including the power to issue directions under section 5 of the central government under this act and for taking measures with respect to such of the matters referred to it in sub section 2 as may be mentioned in the order and subject to the supervision and control of the central government and the provisions of such order such authority or authorities may exercise and powers or perform the functions or take the measures so mentioned in the order as if such authority or authorities had been empowered by this act to exercise those powers or perform those functions or take such measures 
appointment of officers and their powers and functions section 4 first without prejudice to the provisions of subsection 3 of section 3 the central government may appoint officers with such designation as it thinks fit for the purposes of this act and may entrust to them such of the powers and functions under this act as it may deem fit secondly the officers appointed under subsection 1 shall be subject to the general control and direction of the central government or if so directed by that government also of the authority or authorities if any constituted under subsection 3 of section 3 or of any other authority or officer power to give directions section 5 notwithstanding anything contained in any other law but subject to the provisions of this act the central government may in the exercise of its powers and performance of its functions under this act issue directions in writing to any person officer or any authority and such person officer or authority shall be bound to comply with such directions explanation for the avoidance of doubts it is hereby declared that the power to issue directions under this section includes the power to direct a the closure prohibition or regulation of any industry operation or process or b stoppage or regulation of the supply of electricity or water or any other service rules to regulate environmental pollution section 6 the central government may by notification in the official gazette make rules in respect of all or any of the matters referred to in section 3 second in particular and without prejudice to the generality of the foregoing powers such rules may provide for all or any of the following matters namely a the standards of quality of air water or soil for various areas and purposes b the maximum allowable limits of concentration of various environmental pollutants including noise for different areas c the procedures and safeguards for the handling of hazardous substances d the prohibition and restrictions on the handling of hazardous substances in different areas e the prohibition and restriction on the location of industries and the carrying on process and operations in different areas f the procedures and safeguards for the prevention of accidents which may cause environmental pollution and for providing for remedial measures for such accidents prevention control and abatement of environmental pollution persons carrying on industry operation etc not to allow emission or discharge of environmental pollutants in excess of the standards section 
no person carrying on any industry operation or process shall discharge or emit or permit to be discharged or emitted any environmental pollutants in excess of such standards as may be prescribed persons handling hazardous substances to comply with procedural safeguards section 8 no person shall handle or cause to be handled any hazardous substance except in accordance with such procedure and after complying with such safeguards as may be prescribed furnishing of information to authorities and agencies in certain cases section 9 number 1 where the discharge of any environmental pollutant in excess of the prescribed standards occurs or is apprehended to occur due to any accident or other unforeseen act or event the person responsible for such discharge and the person in charge of the place at which such discharge occurs or is apprehended to occur shall be bound to prevent or mitigate the environmental pollution caused as a result of such discharge and shall also forthwith a intimate the fact of such occurrence or apprehension of such occurrence and b be bound if called upon to render all assistance to such authorities or agencies as may be prescribed number 2 on receipt of information with respect to the fact or apprehension on any occurrence of the nature referred to in subsection 1 whether through intimation under that subsection or otherwise the authorities or agencies referred to in subsection 1 shall as early as practicable cause such remedial measures to be taken as necessary to prevent or mitigate the environmental pollution number 3 the expenses if any incurred by any authority or agency with respect to the remedial measures referred to in subsection 2 together with interest at such reasonable rate as the government may by order fix from the date when a demand for the expenses is made until it is paid may be recovered by such authority or agency from the person concerned as arrears of land revenue or of public demand powers of entry and inspection section 10 subject to the provisions of this section any person empowered by the central government in this behalf shall have number 1 a right to enter at all reasonable times with such assistance as he considers necessary any place a for the purpose of performing any of the functions of the central government interested to him b for the purpose of determining whether and if so in what manner any such functions are to be performed or whether any provisions of this act or the rules made there under or any notice order direction or authorization served made given or granted under this act is being or has been complied with 
C. For the purpose of examining and testing any equipment, industrial plant, record, register, document or any other material object or for conducting a search of any building in which he has reason to believe that an offence under this Act or the rules made there under has been or is being or is about to be committed and for seizing any such equipment, industrial plant, record, register, document or other material object if he has reason to believe that it may furnish evidence of the commission of an offence punishable under this Act or the rules made thereunder or that such seizure is a necessary to prevent or mitigate environmental pollution. Point 2. Every person carrying on any industry, operation or process of handling any hazardous substance shall be bound to render all assistance to the person empowered by the central government under subsection 1 for carrying out the functions under that subsection and if he fails to do so without any reasonable cause or excuse, he shall be guilty of an offence under this Act. Point number 3. If any person willfully delays or obstructs any persons empowered by the central government under subsection 1 in the performance of his functions, he shall be guilty of an offence under this Act. Point number 4. The provisions of the Code of Criminal Procedure 1973 or in relation to the state of Jammu and Kashmir or an area in which that code is not in force, the provisions of any corresponding law in force in that state or area shall, so far as may be, apply to any search or seizures under this section as they apply to any search or seizure made under the authority of a warrant issued under Section 94 of the said Code or, as the case may be, under the corresponding provision of the said law. Section 11 deals with the power to take sample and procedure to be followed in connection therewith. The central government or any other officer empowered by the government in its behalf, shall have the power to take, for the purpose of the analysis, the samples of air, water, soil, or any other substance from any factory, premises, or other places in such a manner as may be prescribed. The person taking the sample under this subsection shall serve on the occupier or his agent a person in charge of the place a notice. Then and there, in such form as may be prescribed of his intention to have it so analyzed. In the presence of the occupier or his agent or person, he will collect the sample of the analysis. He will cause the sample to be placed in a container or containers which shall be marked and sealed and shall also be signed both by the person taking the sample and the occupier or his agent or any other person authorized. He will send it without any delay, that is the container or the containers to the laboratory established or recognized by the central government under section 12. Section 12 deals with environmental laboratories. The central government may by notification in the official gazette establish one or more environmental laboratories, recognize one or more laboratories or institutes as environmental laboratories to carry out the functions entrusted to an environmental laboratories under this Act. The central government may by notification in the official gazette make rules which specify 
the functions of the environmental laboratory and the procedure for the submission to the said laboratory of the samples whether of air, water, soil or any other substance for the analysis or the test. Section 13 deals with the government analysis. Now the government is authorized to appoint or recognize such persons as it thinks fit and having the prescribed qualifications to the government analyst for the purpose of analysis of samples of the air, water, soil or any other substance sent for analysis to any environmental laboratory established or recognized under the above section that is section 12. Section 14 deals with the reports of the government analysts. Any document purporting to be reported and signed by the government analyst may be used as an evidence of the facts stated therein in any proceeding under this Act. Section 15 deals with the penalty for contravention of the provisions of the Act and the rules and orders and directions thereto. Whosoever fails to comply with or contravenes any of the provisions of the Act or the rules made or orders or directions issued thereunder shall, in respect of each such failure or contravention, be punishable with imprisonment for the term which may extend to five years, with a fine which may extend to one lakh rupees, or with both. And in case the failure or contravention continues then the additional fine which may extend to 5000 rupees for every single day during which such failure or contravention continues after the conviction of the first such failure or contravention. If the failure or the contravention referred above continues beyond the period of one year after the date of conviction the offender shall be punishable with imprisonment for the term which may extend to seven years. Section 16 deals with offences by the companies. Where any offence under this act has been committed by the company, every person who at the time of the offence was committed was directly in charge of and was responsible to the company for the conduct of the business of the company as well as the company itself shall be deemed to be the guilty of the offence and shall be liable to be proceeded against and punished accordingly. Here for the purpose of this section what does the company mean? Company means any body corporate and includes a firm or other association of individuals. Director here means in relation to the firm a partner in the firm. Section 17 deals with offences by government departments. Where an offence under this act has been committed by the government department, then the head of the department shall be deemed to be the guilty of the offence and he shall be liable to be proceeded against and punished. If the head of the department proves that the offence was committed without his knowledge or that he exercised all due diligence to prevent the commission of such offence, then he shall not be liable for this case. The section 18 to 25 deals with the miscellaneous provisions which are related to the protection of action taken in good faith section 18. Cognizance of Offences, Section 19, Information Reports or Returns, Section 20, Members, Officers and Employees of the Authority constituted under Section 3 to be the Public Servants, Section 21, Bar of Jurisdiction, Section 22, Powers to Delegate, Section 23, Effect of Other Laws, Section 24, and power to make rules section 25. So students, let us now summarize what we have learnt in this module. Regulatory measures taken to prevent environment deterioration are guided by the principle of sustainable development and improvement 
in natural environment. Effective implementation of Environment Protection Act can address the various environmental challenges. The central government issues guidelines, notifications, policies and programs under Environment Protection Act 1986 from time to time relating to protection of environment, conservation of biological diversity and for attaining high standards of environmental quality. Environment Protection Act follows the polluters pay principle that ensures polluters must pay for damage caused to the environment and human health. Only clean and healthy environment can offer better opportunities for the sustainable economic growth. Thank you.